If you've ever used Ableton Live's arrangement view, then you know how incredible it is to have really smooth transitions and have one song flow automatically into the next song without having to do anything. But what do you do if you get to the end of song one and you want to make sure you stop before you get to song two? You either reach down and hit spacebar, or maybe you even have a MIDI controller that you've assigned to stop. But what if you could automatically program Ableton Live so that the end of song one, it's going to stop so that it doesn't automatically go into song two. Hey, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer, founder of From Studio Stage. Today, I want to show you how to do just that. I want to show you how to create what I call a stop track using a MIDI clip and the IEC driver so that you can have Ableton Live automatically stop when you get to a certain place in the arrangement. Now, best of all, even if you've done this before and have been doing this for years, I'm going to show you something brand new, which is how to also use your MIDI controller to stop and have Ableton Live stop with a stop clip at the same time. So. Let's get started. So in order to make this happen, we have to use the IEC driver. Now, in last week's tutorial, I explained what the IEC driver was, how to set it up, and how to map uh, MIDI notes in Ableton Live to control features in Ableton Live. If you've never used the IEC driver or haven't set it up before, make sure to watch last week's video to get an idea of how to do that. Now, to make this happen, what I'm going to do is go and create a MIDI track. So Command-Shift-T. I'm going to name this Stop. I've already set up my IEC driver and I've got my routings correct in Ableton Live. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and route this track, individual track, to IEC driver bus 1. And then I need to create a MIDI clip. So I'm going to just double click uh, right here at the end of song 1. Because I'm in Live 10, I can double click to create a clip. If you're in Live 9, just select about a measure's worth of space. Do Command Shift M to create that clip. Now I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom and just choose any MIDI note. I'm going to choose C minus 2. I'm going to double click and then drag that MIDI note all the way to the end so that I have a measure long note. Now the reason I do that is so when I look up into the arrangement, I see a note that has filled the entire clip. I don't just see a note at the beginning and the rest of the clip is empty. Just personal preference though. So now that we've created our MIDI clip, we need to assign that clip to Ableton Live's stop. What we're going to do is do Command M or Control M if you're on a PC, or click MIDI up in the upper right hand corner of live screen to enter MIDI map mode. And then what I'm going to do is start Live's playback a couple measures before that MIDI clip. Now if you're song is pretty fast your tempo is pretty fast you may want to go a few measures back but i'm just going to jump back a few measures and then i'm going to go up and click stop now what's going to happen as soon as that clip hits it's going to assign that note to ableton live stop now it's not going to stop because i'm still in mini map mode but if i get out of mini map mode command m press space bar and now let me jump back just a few measures here and if I hit stop, then the stop clip is going to automatically stop. So that's how we can create a stop track, create a stop clip within that stop track so that uh, at any point and anywhere we place that clip, live will automatically stop. So for instance, I can go and uh, just drag this clip out, duplicate it, go later in my arrangement, and now at that place in the arrangement, live is going to stop. Wherever that clip is, it's going to automatically stop. But let's go back to the beginning, the intro, where I talked about doing this also with a MIDI controller. What if I want to assign a button on my MIDI controller? So let's go in here and let's assign, uh, let's assign this button on my MIDI controller to stop. So I'm going to click stop, click this on my MIDI controller. Now it's assigned, so I can go anywhere in my arrangement. I can press stop on my Disaster Designs DMC60. Live is going to automatically stop. But if I go back to the stop clip, watch what happens now. It's going to play right through it. The reason is, is these are now two different notes. So how can we use our MIDI controller and the stop clip at the same time? It's very, very simple. What you need to do is first figure out what button on your MIDI controller you want to use. So again, I'll use this button and map it to Ableton Live. Now, make sure you set up your MIDI controller like I show in the MIDI controller video. I've linked that in the description below. So for instance, I've made sure that on the input side of my controller, I have remote enabled so that I can remotely control live from that controller. I map stop, and then I want to go into live's MIDI mappings browser. It's super easy to get to. Just go into MIDI map mode and click on the browser. And then when you go and look at everything in the browser, go to stop, and you'll see that MIDI channel one Note F minus two is now controlling stop. All we need to do is get out of MIDI map mode, go back to our MIDI clip, and we want to move our note here to F minus two. So it's the same exact note that our MIDI controller is set to. So now, 
again, if I, let's close our browser down here, close detail view. If I just go and play in the arrangement and I press stop on my MIDI controller, we're gonna stop, which is great. But if I go back before that MIDI clip, just like we set up and I press play hands off, once I hit that MIDI clip, Live is going to stop as well. So that's how we could create a stop track in Ableton Live so that our arrangement will stop wherever we place the clip and how we can use our MIDI controller at the same time with that clip. Now, over the next few weeks, I'm gonna to continue to share a few more of my favorite tips and tricks with using the IEC driver. To make sure you see those, hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, follow on Instagram or Instagram Live. Make sure you like our page on Facebook so that you see all this content as it comes out. If you can't wait, uh, for those tutorials to come out or you want to go even further with using the IEC driver with Ableton Live, then head to from studio to stage.com where you can start a free seven day trial. That's going to give you access to every course in the catalog, but it's also going to give you access to the using the IEC driver with Ableton Live course. You'll see how to set up the IEC driver. I'll show you how to create the stop track just like I did here, but then I'm going to walk you from start to finish through so many other really cool ideas, how to have Ableton Live automatically add locators for you how to create a pause and go to next track, repeat cues, dynamic guide cues, all sorts of things. So if you want to learn how to do that and just in general, learn how to step on stage, perform confidently with Ableton Live, then make sure to check out from Studio Stage. It'll give you access to every course. We add a new course every week. Uh, you get access to every template that I use to create um, the content for that course. You get access to a monthly call just for subscribers, a private Facebook group, which is one of my favorite parts of the subscription and then you also get free access to every webinar we do it's normally twenty dollars but for subscribers it is free so if you want to learn more about that start a free seven day trial head to from studio to stage.com i uh, hope you guys have a great week hope to see you next week as we continue to talk about using the iec driver with ableton live take care everybody Bye.